Hey guys, welcome to the Open World User Interface tutorial. Um, we're going to have a look at the four major sections uh, of the user interface, being the chat in the bottom left one, the specific ship information in the top left, then on the bottom right you got the Open World Speed um, wind angle, and if you click on the fleet you get your fleet information shown in the top right. Um, yeah, let's kick it off with the chat. The chat has multiple tabs. Each tab is a different chat box, chat room, sort of say. Um, global global means you can talk to players of all nations. So if I were Dutch and I want to communicate with the Swedish or the Spanish, just type a message in there and they will be able to read it. Um, if you were to go to your options on the social, enable all communications with enemy nations, that needs to be checked in order for global to properly function. Otherwise, you would just see the communication of people in your own nation. Alright, with that addressed, let's get to the different tabs. Help is the same as Global. It's effectively a large Q&A session for people who have questions regarding certain aspects of the game, or stuck, or just want some generic tips and tricks on how to uh, proceed. Nation Chat, as the name indicates, is just for Dutch people, or just Spanish people, depending on the nation you play for and allows for yeah, some nice, pretty unobstructed national uh, conversation. Then there's some other tabs as well, clan being obviously uh, different for each clan, but it allows people of my clan to speak with each other in a private room. Uh, and then if you were to go to a port, you would get, for example, trade tab, which is uh, a chat box that's just for the people that are currently in the port, in this case Willemstad, they would be able to talk to each other as well. So effectively it's just you can switch between the different available chat boxes. Um, on the left side, let's go to Nation tab. On the left side there's a little icon. If you click here you can adjust the size of the letters in your chat box. So if I were to select medium you can see they get bigger and if I select large they become huge. So I'm going to put it back on small, but that just makes it easier to read for certain people. Um, then you have the arrow key. The arrow key allows you to navigate left and right amongst all the tabs you have open. Currently I only have four, but it's possible to get more open. Uh, for example, if someone sends you a private message, which I'll show you in a minute, it will pop up here as a different tab as well. Therefore the navigation with these keys is quite useful. Um, you have a plus a minus button here. The plus button allows you to open channels. Well, say for example I by accident closed Nation Global a help chat. If I click on the plus I can reopen them. And you can see they all appear again. If you look closely you saw a different uh, uh, option as well, Great Britain. Due to the line system we have you can actually chat uh, between two nations. Two uh, allied nations can directly chat to each other so it's like an, somewhere an intermediate between national chat and global, which is quite useful. Um, note that some of the tabs are currently blinking. Um, blinking means something has been set since the last time you've read it. So if I were to click here, you could see a new message has just recently been added. And therefore, I can just click away now and this one should stop flashing, which it does. Next up is the minus button. If I were to click this, the tab, uh, the chat box would minimize itself. You can see how it conveniently folds in the corner here, and yeah, it's nicely stored away. If I click that button again, you can see it restores it to its former size. If you look here, this button right here allows you to basically shape the chat in whatever way you want, big, small, whatever suits your screen, your liking, per personal preference. Um, if you want to move your chat, you're able to do that as well. If you were to click on the center, nothing would happen. So I usually just use this little box in the bottom right to just drag it around and you can place it wherever it suits your personal preference the most. I prefer the bottom left corner. And I think that sums up the main points of the chat here. Above the chat you have a little buddy icon. It shows your entire friend list. How to add people to this list I will show you in a minute. Ignore list and you're able to find people 
with this tool. So for example, say I want to find Ragnar. Well, you get an entire list of people that are named Ragnar. Well, I don't know which one it is I want. So what I can do, and this is quite interesting, you can right click his name. You can see here there's info. If you were to click info, you could see, hey, Ragnar, he plays for the pirate nation, his rank, his curse, his birthday. Birthday is effectively the date you join uh, the server and clan PW. Well, it's all perfectly fine. It's not the one I was looking for. I was looking for this Ragnar. Ah, yes, he was Ragnar. Great Britain, Rear Admiral, Azoran. That's the one. So that's a good way to differentiate people. Alright, maybe some nice explaining. You get a little drop down menu if you click on someone. I'm just gonna open the nation chat real quick and I'm gonna open the search function again. By clicking here you can drag it around and I wanna show you something. Um, I'm a moderator for this game which allows me to uh, moderate the chat if needed according to these three options I have. We usually can send out warnings which effectively is a warning signal that pops up on your screen it's a message box right in the center here that just indicates hey your behavior has been up to a standard in which we think we need to uh, step in and obviously these kind of speak for themselves it allows us to keep the chat on a decent level that's acceptable for the community um, besides those options mind you regular players would not have these options um, you would have a private chat a mail and add friend ignore group invite and clan invite so as I said a minute ago you can actually private chat someone and they would appear on a different tab so you see you got your nation your global and your private chat if I were to mail a friend I'll get to that in a minute but add a friend he would appear in my friend list right here Let's search Ragnar again. You have the ignore function which is the same as the friend list. You got your group invite which I'll get to in a minute and your clan invite which I'll get to in a minute as well. So I mentioned you're able to mail someone. This is your mailbox. Currently I have deleted most of my messages just this one is still here to uh, stick around. Um, if I were to send someone a message you would get a one next to this icon and it would mean he has one unread message in his inbox. Uh, why is this useful? It allows you to send messages or communication that will actually stay longer because chat messages often get lost in larger uh, spamming that every now and then happens or just you can miss something easily and it's nice to uh, be able to read it back. Um, so you would be able to see that here. You can see who sent it. In this case I send the mail to the clan, hence why I can see a mail sent by me. Um, let's move on to this list. This is your history. Um, whenever you fight a battle or you do some trading or you sold some items, the B, T and S, you can uh, see it back in this history. If I were to fight a fight and I would get 60,000 gold and 1200 XP, it uh, would say literally you received for combat 60,000 gold and 1200 XP. Trading just says you sold 30 items for an X amount of gold and sold it or ship. I'm not sure which one it is at this point, but th the principle is the same. As long as you don't specifically select some, uh, one of those, you'll just get all the messages. And lastly, there's the clan. Well, there's your clan interface. Nothing out of the ordinary. You got your name, your abbreviation, and just some clan information you want to put there members and for me since I'm clan leader I got the option to send the clan mail I think officers are able to send the clan mail as well um, as leader I can edit the information that stands right here and everyone has the option to leave so if we were to look at how this clan uh, tab would look if I were to right click someone I can open a private chat which I showed you before. I can send an email, invite someone to a group, which I'll show you in a minute. I can promote a member to an officer and I can demote an officer back to a member and obviously I can kick someone out. Um, 
So I kind of want to show you what a group invite looks like. So if I were to invite Konali, Konali is not online at this point, but you can see how on the left of the screen this little box appeared. You can invite up to 12 people into your group. What it shows you, and you can just click and drag it around, it shows you your name, your ship, and where you are. This can say uh, ship. Oh, this can say at sea. You're in harbor. Or you're in a battle. Those are kind of the flavors you have. Um, and you can see I invited Kanali. What ship he has is unknown, and location was unknown as well. Hey, Kanali was online, so it's no surprise that his invite timed out. Um, this just happens even if someone's AFK, but he's online. If he doesn't accept in I think 30 seconds give or take his invite will just uh, expire and you have to re-invite him so we can close this message and you can see that I'm currently on my own in my little group I think that kind of covers the basics of the chat um, are there any options I haven't uh, oh yeah if you were to directly right click someone in the chat you would get some more options than you would if I just uh, the friend list or the search function I showed you in a minute ago. Um, reply is a very neat um, feature that allows you to... Is there an example? Oh, right. Royal Dutch Protector is new and if I were to click reply it would directly address it to him. So if I were to type hello, welcome, you can see that in the chat it directly says steel sandwich, the color is green because I'm a moderator to Royal Dutch Protector, hello, welcome. If I were to click again, you can see some more options. The info is the one I showed you before, which it says nation, uh, clan, um, birthday. Same feature, you can copy. So if someone types, um, for example, YouTube links, or just in general something you want to have on your clipboard, you can right click, copy, and you'll have that feature. Private chat will open a different tab again, as mentioned. You can just have a private chat. Trade is a feature you can initiate when you're in the port. If you're in the port, you can click trade and the trade window will appear. But we'll cover that in a different tutorial. Mail, we have covered. Group invite, we've covered. Clan invite, effectively, is similar to a group invite. It just goes for the clan and it won't show up on the left just green he will just be added towards the clan list we showed right here add friend ignore are quite obvious and report report is quite an important feature um, report is used for chat violations that's the main use of it if someone were to be toxic or blatantly uh, insulting profanity anything along that line right click report and that that results in the, the that piece of chat be sent to us and we can evaluate it and uh, in hindsight act accordingly to what needs to be uh, enacted. We can also directly enact it as I said earlier with a warning, a one day ban or a seven day ban depending on the severity of the offense. Right, so if I were to click out of this we're back at the start. Maybe a nice intermezzo is on the bottom of your screen you have your ping, the FPS and the amount of people that are currently online. Which is just a neat little feature to have. Um, I'm just going to turn my screen a tiny bit so you get a bit more of a contrast when looking at these icons. Um, on the bottom, let's start right there, it says area protected by Willemstad. It means I'm currently in front of the Dutch capital. An area protected by Willemstad means an enemy right here, right at this spot, can't attack me. It's just a feature we have around the capitals of each nation. Um, yeah. So, let's click on this ship with the three lines. It actually opens up a quite an interesting tab. And I'm currently going to right click my group and delete this group because it's interfering with my uh, user interface for my ship. It gives you a brief overview of what the condition of your ship is. F stands for front armor, back armor, left armor, right armor, hull, pump, rudder, sails and crew. So, right now, 
I'm on the Agamemnon. An Agamemnon is a ship that's able to carry more than 300 crew. So I can click on the Manage Crew option. And that opens an interesting tab again. Leadership. Um, leadership equals your rank. The higher your rank is, the more uh, crew you are able to have. Currently, I'm able to have 1100, but I only have 310 crew. So if I were to slide this to the right, you can see that a minus 3 crew starts to appear. What this boils down to is that I can't drag it to 500 and press OK. It would give an error message. Not enough crew. Shit. Alright, that's not good. So let's slide it back here. So say I only want 229 crew on my Agamemnon. I can press OK. And you can see, hey, I only have 229 crew. So I manage crew again, and you can see that I have 229 crew and 81 free crew at this point. My ship is for 46% man, which is not particularly great, but that's a side note. Um, let's put the crew on back, and let's go to the next part. If your ship is damaged whilst you're in the open world, you can click the repair feature. Currently my ship is in perfect condition so I can't click it, but it's a clickable box right the size of this. In order to repair an open world, you need repair kits which are shown below. I can hold 25 and I got 11 with me right now, which is good. Hence I can't demonstrate it at this point, so I won't. So we'll move on to the next part. I'm going to move my chat box down, or at least make it a bit smaller so I get the entire length of this box in. And you can see it's divided in three parts. you got your hull, you got your upgrades, and you got your rank and wealth overview. Currently I'm a Schout bin Acht, which is the highest rank there is for the Dutch nation. The goal I have at this point is a bit over half a million. Um, if you were to still be grinding along your level, as in if you weren't max rank, you would be able to see between your rank and your goal how much XP you would need in order to proceed to the next rank. So say you need 1500 but you have 1150, it would say 1150 slash 1500. Alright, so let's move on to your hole. What exactly can be put in your hole, I'm not going to cover in this tutorial. I'm just going to uh, show you how you can scroll down and see how much there is in your hole. Currently, I have six needlefish and two jacks in my hole. The weight of a needlefish is 0 0.5. I got six of those, so that's weight of three. I got two jacks with a weight of 0 0.5, so that's one. Three plus one is four. My ship is able to have 600 worth of weight in my hull, and I currently have 4, so 4 out of 600. If I were to have loads of small items, you can, or at least uh, loads of small stacks, you can scroll down via this slider or just scroll with your mouse wheel. Mind you, if you were to hit the full, as, as of now in the game, you would zoom in uh, on your ship. Um, upgrades is just a set amount of slots, so there's no need to scroll. You can, but you'll zoom in on your ship. And that kind of shows where, for example, Master of Marines or any of the other grip upgrades are stored. And more of the, the tangible resources like coal and iron, they'll all be stacked in your hold itself. And that kind of covers your ship overview. There's another feature, the Teleport to Capital feature. Um, currently this feature um, can be enacted I think every four hours if I say it correctly and if you were to click on it you get a question are you sure you want to teleport if you were to click confirm it would take you two minutes uh, for the teleport to be complete and you'll spawn in front of your capital I'm um, as of now in front of my capital so I'll demonstrate it anyways are you sure you want to teleport I am sure yeah I got items in my hold so it won't be able to but let's show what it says you need to clean up the hold before teleport alright so we'll do that we'll click on the ship icon here we'll move to our hold mind you I'll explain it later I'll just turn that off 
if you right click an item in this uh, instance it's a fish if I were to convert it it's effectively your crafting menu on the sea I would get fish meat if I want to convert all of that stack I would just convert all and if I want to convert all fish like uh, items in my hold I'll just convert similar items well I'll press that and I'll end up with fish meat now you see the menu has simplified you can split a stack into whichever quantity you want note that at the top it actually says how much it will weigh so I'm going to split it like this nothing fancy just easy to do if I were to right click it again I can actually send it to chat if you were to send something to chat via right clicking then send to chat it would end up in the chat tab your or chat box you're currently in what this means is if I were to find a module or an item or anything in that regard I can just right click and send to chat and to let people know hey I got this or what does this do or what does this mean and it allows you to easily demonstrate what you actually have if I were to hoover over with the mouse it would just say fish meat weight 0 0.5 which is exactly the description I have here if it would say here that it could make your ship invulnerable whatever it's an example it's not the case fish meat doesn't do that it would read it here as well or maybe better example powder monkeys they give an X percent of reload reduction if it would say it here it would say it here as well so you can also demonstrate or help people who are trying to figure out what they want or what they need via sending it to chat Send to Clan Warehouse is a feature you can utilize in port, which is something I will not cover in this tutorial. It suffice to say, it doesn't work in open world. Player needs to be in port to access Clan Warehouse. Alright, so what are we looking at right underneath Teleport to Capital? There's your days at sea. Um, currently, I'm four days at sea and the next amount of hours. It effectively is a guideline if you want to travel longer distances if you were to press the M key you would open up your world map um, I've sailed plenty of times back and forth between Oranjestad and Willemstad and I know that it takes you roughly four and a bit days depending on the ship you're in so if I were to set sail from my current location which is Willemstad and uh, I sail in the proper direction which is north east bound and seven days have passed and I still haven't seen an island you're probably around here somewhere if two days have passed I should know that I'm not there yet or not will be there for the next few minutes I will be roughly here um, it's nothing um, that's currently tied to a game mechanic it's merely for your own um, coordination and navigation. Underneath that there are two buttons, one of it which is pray. Uh, praying is a button that initiates a pray. The use of it is currently not known or not implemented either of which, I'm not sure. Which is just simply saying praying 18 seconds, not sure what it does or if it does anything at this point. Fishing is what this little icon stands for, it's a fish initiates fishing. The fish meat I had, or the fishes I should say, came from fishing. Um, I'm currently in the area protected by Wellemstad, therefore fishing doesn't work. It works outside the protected area, otherwise it would have been crammed with fishermen's right here. Um, but over time you'll just get an X amount of fish in your hole. That's kinda it. It will flash uh, white whenever it's uh, toggled on and if it's toggled off it'll be grey with a white outline alright I think I'm going to cover the fleet first so give me a second alright I just clicked on the ship I can click on whichever ship I want in the top right of the screen a little information box will pop up I click with left and if I were to click anywhere else it would 
cancel out the fleet sighting you just did. Alright, so I saw a ship on the open world, I clicked on it. You can see the circle that it selected. And it says Vreemde Provincia, which means the Dutch nation in game. The ship type is a trader's brig and contraband goods found. I'll get to that in a minute. I can click on any fleet I see and it'll, it'll state the ship type. And if it's more than one ship, it'll say which ships are in the fleet with it. So, right here we have a Navy brig with two Niagara's a brig, a Mercury and two Privateers. If there's a player around, I'm not sure if there is. Didn't think so at this point. If there was a player around, the screen would look somewhat different. It would say the rank of the player then the name of the player and then the ship the player is in. So for example in my case we saw right here my rank is Schout bij Nacht. If I were to click on myself I'm in Agamemnon and my in-game name is Steel Sandwich it would say Schout bij Nacht Steel Sandwich on a Agamemnon. And if I were to carry some fleet ships with me underneath it it would have the little tab just like the AI fleet that says Niagara 2x, meaning two Niagara's are in the fleet. Um, with a player, and it's currently greyed out, I'm not sure if it's properly visible. Um, I'm still panning around to see if a player will actually show up. Um, it says private message. If I were to click on this, a chat box would open again, right here. And it says invite to group. So the group we have earlier, and to which we could invite people via right click in chat, is also possible by a direct selection in open world and using this button. If we were to find an enemy fleet or a friendly fleet with contraband goods, that's the only exception if they have contraband goods, you can press attack. Normally if you were to uh, attack your own nation, Without contraband goods, you would turn pirate. In this case, the ship has, therefore you can attack it. And this button would light up, but I'm in the area protected by Willemstad, so I'm not able to do that. But that's just a technicality. Um, and I th think there's still no player in sight, or maybe we get lucky right here. Ah, lovely. So, currently... Uh, we have a Jonker, which is the, the first rank in the Dutch nation. And then his name is Royal Dutch Protector, sailing on a basic cutter. A basic cutter is a ship. And you can see that the private message and the invite to group have lighted up. And that's it. If it were, for example, a French guy, I could have pressed the attack button as soon as I was closer to him. And that kind of summarizes this part of the user interface as well. Next up is the re report bug button, which is effectively aligned with the open world uh, characteristics. F11, it's a famous term, you'll hear it in chat and read on the forum. F11 is just a bug reporter uh, module we have. There's four types of it. You got the, the varia, you got your graphics, your gameplay, and your audio. You can just simply select them. Um, you can select how much of an impact it actually has. Position is just a mere registration of where you are in the game. Uh, position on the world map. You can name the bug, add a description and a screenshot will be included. As you could see I clicked on it with my left mouse button and you can see it opened up and you can just preview your screenshot. You can send report, you can cancel it. I'm not going to send one, no need to spam them with uh, unnecessary reports, and I'm going to click cancel. So, I'm going to have a look at where we are. If I were to turn my camera at the point on which I'm looking directly astern of my own ship, you can see the wind is coming from this direction, which is almost exactly southeast, and it's heading towards that direction, the northwest. So if I were to slowly set sail, you see that my speed, uh, my sail percentages are going up. Every click I do adds twenty percent. So I'm currently going slow, half, and full. 
I'm going to go back towards that slow again, just for demonstration purposes. You can see underneath here that I'm currently going 4 knots, which is just your speed indication. The slider right here indicates if I'm going left, you can see my ship turn, or right. As of yet, we only have full turns, no half turning, so you see that uh, the slider will not turn and always says full right or full left. I'm going to turn with my camera a bit. You can just see how the compass rotates um, along with my positioning. So I'm just going to slow down at this point. What it says Skipper Auto is a feature that has no influence in open world as of yet. Skipper Auto is just a user interface tool which is also present in battles. In battles you are able to turn your yards of your respectful masts in different succession if you want to or in different directions therefore allowing you to turn better. Um, currently Skipper Auto just means they choose the most uh, the, the optimal wind position to catch the most speed to make the most speed so it's not of use currently crew infinite it just means there's no real crew indication going on sail percentage is not indicated here as well at this stage and stop as I said just uh, indicates what your speed is or what your speed is uh, so no, I should rephrase that. It just indicates how much sail you've set and therefore how fast you'll be. Obviously if you go full sail you'll be the fastest. If you go stop, you'll stop. And whilst I'm saying that, I'm thinking if I've missed any of the major features, but I think this covers all the open world um I think this covers all of the open world features of the user interface we have. So yeah, that's kind of it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope this was helpful. If I've missed anything, feel free to point it out and I'll edit it in. Alright, take care guys.